Hello everyone. Jupiter, known as Guru in the Vedic system, is very soon, on the 1st of May, actually going to enter into the sign of Taurus. Jupiter is success, prosperity, abundance, and he's entering into the sign of earthly wealth and contentment. But Guru himself, Jupiter, is not so happy in Taurus at all. Therefore, there is a tricky side to this transit and he's aspecting directly the south node K2. We need to know the deep secrets of this transit so that we can definitely make the most of it in the coming year. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. If the video is good for you, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. Let's go. Let's look at the astrology, everyone. This tells us so much about what we can all expect from this transit. Guru enters into Taurus. He's alone. No one else is there. Wow, this is really good. Not only that, he is aspecting two planets only, K2 and the moon from the fifth and the ninth aspect. But as I've said, only Jupiter's fifth aspect to K2 continues all the way through this yearly transit. I'll talk about it more in a minute. The one thing you should know is that every other planet has no aspect whatsoever onto Jupiter. This means for the first few months of this transit, you will find you get many benefits. If you are due to get benefits, some sign more than others, don't forget, during this Guru Taurus transit, it will come very, very soon. So watch out for that. What are the benefits? Well, Guru is not happy in Taurus personally, but you may get benefit in certain areas of your life, many people. He's not happy, by the way, just in case you're thinking why, because he rules Sagittarius. Count from there. It's six signs away. The longer Guru Jupiter remains in Taurus sign, the more agitated, frustrated and annoyed he will become. So make hay when the sun shines, as they say, and Jupiter in Taurus has this effect. People benefiting are business people, local business, community business, especially food business, hotel business. Anything to do with cooking food is promoted in a very prosperous way, actually, for many people when Guru's in Taurus. Fashion industry, clothing people, selling clothes, all of these things promoting home security, beautification, interior decoration, definitely all of these industries get benefit here. And definitely education itself, educating children, dealing with children's needs, having children. Jupiter in Taurus is very auspicious, expanding your family. Farming industry, farming the land, of course, providing food for other people and definitely caring for non-humans on the land ethically is definitely important. Generally, Jupiter Taurus gives everybody a bit of an exclusive feeling. It's about my family, my situation, my home. Nothing bad with that. But as it continues on, Jupiter, as I say, becomes more and more agitated. Why? Because Jupiter aspects K2 and Jupiter and K2 co-rulers of Pisces are about spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge. See, Jupiter gets so security minded here. People become so concerned about material factors. They neglect spiritual wisdom, spiritual practices. Don't do that. It can have negative impact during the next 12 months. There's another big secret, though, to this Jupiter K2 factor here, this Jupiter aspect onto K2 all year, and that is to do with factors from our past. See, reading this, this chart subtly, Venus is the dispositor. He's, he's 12 to Guru, the past, something hidden. And Moon is the other dispositor. He's in the graveyard. He's nine away. Something unfinished. As I say, skeletons in the closet is coming up. Something from your life that was hidden, K2 is hidden, is going to be made known to many people. Watch out for this and deal with it ethically and it will be absolutely fine. Even people from your past may be coming back. People you've not seen or heard from for many years. It's all about Jupiter's karmas promoted here. Once again, it's a good thing because you need to deal with these unfinished factors. Watch out, though, for the negative side of Guru in Taurus. I have to mention this, you know, six away from Sagittarius. 
we're going to get a little bit of indigestion. How can I put it? Jupiter in Taurus makes many people overindulgence. Diets, well, my goodness, it's very difficult to be disciplined when you have Guru in Taurus generally. And if it is agitating your moon sign, ascendant sign, definitely this will be the case. So people get a bit lazy, like the daysical exercise routine goes to pot, diet goes to pot, definitely. Sweet food. So if you are selling sweets, making sweets, dealing with confectionery industry, you're going to make a pot of money because everybody wants this stuff. And generally, people dealing with non-human animals, be kind to them during this year. Jupiter Taurus, particularly helping farm animals, animals who are in difficulty, distress, will promote many good karmas this year. On the world stage, Jupiter Taurus can promote peace a little bit, but not easily. As I say, he's in a difficult place for himself. Check it out. He's six away from Sagittarius, three away from Pisces. Three and six houses are conflict houses, not houses of peace. So Jupiter in Taurus would seem to be giving security desires, peaceful desires, but it won't work out that way exactly on the world stage, I'm afraid. However, having said that, Guru in Taurus promotes a feeling of me and mine. People's feeling now is our security, our country first and, and foremost. So world leaders will pick up on this and will be promoting security of homeland above everything. Final important factor, Guru's in a fixed sign and so is Saturn. Guru and Saturn in fixed signs, many people have to deal with fixed factors that they cannot change easily during the next 12 months. That's okay. Deal with them ethically, as I say, especially unexpected factors from the past and all will be well. How to use the readings, though, make sure you have a Vedic chart only. You must use the moon and ascendant sign both. And you can also use moon and ascendant in your D9 Navamsa chart if you should have it as well. What's the difference, you may ask? Birth chart Navamsa. Navamsa shows definite destined factors. Definitely the moon in the D9 is really important. Moon in the birth chart as well. People say once again, what is more important, moon or ascendant? Moon. Moon, Chandra's position, is the most important because it shows what you will definitely experience, whereas Ascendant can bring experience, but is about expanding life direction. It's hard to differentiate between those things, but that's what's going on. If you're unsure about the position of your Vedic moon sign, sidereal moon, sidereal ascending sign, check the link below. There's a website there. Put in your birth data. Bring up those markers in your chart. Let's go. For Aries moon and Aries ascendant both, are you ready for the money? Are you ready for the pot of gold? Are you ready for more wealth and security? You can have it in the next 12 months. See, Guru is going into the second house of your chart, especially from the moon. This is extremely beneficial. Guru is your ninth house lord, fortune lord, Bhagya lord. So definitely you will get money. You will get increase in, in your wealth pot, basically. Maybe some of you inheritance, family business expands, something such as this. But what's the difficult factor here? I have to bring it up. People hate it when I say negative things, but I'm an astrologer who wants to give you the true picture, everyone. Others may not do so. Here's the thing. There is an obstruction for moon Aries here, particularly ascendant somewhat. What is it? Rahu. Rahu is in the 12th house. He is 11 from Jupiter in Gochar transit. This puts a block onto Jupiter's transit. Now, what does this block mean? Does it mean you're not going to get the money, get the increase, get the security? No, but it means there will be some irritating factors that could cause disturbance. Let me tell you about them. You see, from Guru's point of view, Rahu is 11 houses away. So factors connected to 11th house will cause disturbance for you. What are they? Jobs, interviews, new job situation. Look at it carefully. Rahu's smoke and illusion is 
definitely influencing it, especially from money expected from it. They may say it's going to be this amount of money, but it won't be. Check out money promised to you very, very carefully during this next 12 months, especially from job situation. Next thing, watch your network circles. There could be some disturbance from friends, jealousy from friends and definitely colleagues. Watch your back in the office, in the colleague situation. Everybody is not being really upfront. Don't have, don't get paranoid about this. It's going to be fine. Guru's position is so auspicious second to your moon or ascendant that even though these disturbing factors are there, you win out in the end. Do not fear. See, Jupiter in Taurus, second house, makes family matters priority this year. Now, Elder siblings can cause you distress. Elder siblings more than younger siblings, particularly around financial family matters, deal with this carefully. Now, Jupiter, your ninth house lord, rules education as well. Gone six away, students are becoming, do I want this course? Is it worth the money? Is it too expensive? This sort of thing. You're becoming insecure about education. Stick with it. Jupiter Taurus does not help major transformation. Wait until he gets into Gemini sign, then you will make the right move after May 25. That's the best advice here. Stick with it. And Jupiter second house gives you power in your speech. You impress people with your speech big time. Presentations, all of these things, fantastic. Watch out though. Because Jupiter Taurus is a little bit not favorable for saying it like it is without tact. Aries do this. To begin with, everything's fine. But family circle difficulties, confrontations increase the longer Jupiter's in Taurus. If you've got family problems, deal with them as soon as Jupiter enters this sign. Because that's when, as I've just spoken about, he gives best result. Watch your food intake. Diet and food is really important in the next 12 months. Aries, Moon and Ascendant. Why? Because second house rules it. But here's the other big secret. Jupiter is being afflicted by Rahu. Rahu in Pisces shows loss of weight. It's really interesting, isn't it? You could go on extreme diet. Some of you lose a whole pile of weight, but it could not be good for your health. Be careful around food, moderation necessary, or you could even eat something not good for you. Watch food intake, keep it moderate, and then things will be fine. So finally then, business people, though, this is a good year, particularly family business, expanding it cautiously, wills, legacies, money in the bank will increase. But watch out for those irritating factors I've just been speaking about. Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant, of course, Guru is going to be in your sign. Is this good? It's especially good from ascendant. But from the moon, there's a few agitating factors. But nonetheless, it's an expansive transit for both of you. There are no obstructions whatsoever to this Guru transit Taurus. And there are no planets in Scorpio. Watch out, though, later on in the year... When planets oppose Jupiter, you're going to get a few more problems. So like I've just said, make the most of the beginning of, of this transit. First few months are extremely expansive for you in many directions of your life. Now, Guru is a difficult planet for Taurus, let's face it. He's a functional malefic. But when he's in Taurus, if you work well with him... You can make the best of it. He rules 8th house, 11th house. Job opportunities abound for you. New income, more income, definitely. Business people expanding business. Good, particularly beginning of the transit. One thing, though, Jupiter Taurus, good for starting a family for Taurus, Moon and Ascendant. Either way, it's very auspicious. And relationships with your children improve tremendously. 
One minus, though, as this transit goes on over time, check beginning of the video, what I've been saying there, very important for Taurus, you become a little bit lazier, a little bit lackadaisical. Everything's okay, particularly health matters can become difficult. Why? You just don't watch your diet. Yes, expanding waistline is a big issue for many Taurians during this transit. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but the thing is, you may just not get on top of it soon enough and then you become stressed by it, particularly moon Taurians, because Jupiter in the moon sign is not so easy. Jupiter moon sign, mind becomes agitated with family concerns and you can turn to food to comfort you sometimes. Watch out for this. It doesn't have to happen. It's generally stressful, you see, moon Taurus, because Jupiter and the moon agitates the mind. Jupiter is functional, malefic. To begin with, you're optimistic, expansive, but then moon sign Taurus become a little bit more, more agitated. Relaxation, stress relief will help you make the best of the transit, especially when you have the moon in Taurus. Many Taurians expand friendship network circles this year. New friends come into your orbit. But here's the thing. Watch friendships carefully, particularly end of the year. Jupiter is bringing you expansion here. But are these people good for you? Watch who you speak to. Watch who you trust completely. One thing will definitely happen. Somebody from your friendship network circle who you've not seen for some time or romantically been, been connected to comes back. Why? Because K2 is in the fifth house and Jupiter aspects K2 for the whole of this transit. You can have compulsive romantic attractions here or you can have ex-partners starting relationship with you again sometimes. Take it easy though because K2 and Jupiter aspecting like that. These are very fated things. Watch expectations here. But for some people, it's even past life. K2 is past life. K2 rules seventh house. There could be somebody that you've known past life becoming romantically inclined towards you or vice versa. So it's a very karmic year for relationships. Here's another side to it. K2 is spouse. So, Jupiter aspect in K2. This is the time to heal romantically and in every way with your spouse. If you've been having difficulties, relationship problems, girlfriend, boyfriend, you can heal it this year with understanding and compromise, definitely. For Gemini, Moon and Ascendant, take care in this transit because Guru is the lord of your seventh house. He's always going to put you into difficult situations. He becomes bad acacia for you. Now, the last year he's been so good for you when he's been in Aries, expanding boundaries and definitely bringing you profit in life. But now he's going into the house of expenses, extravagance into the twelfth house of your chart. And from this position, he's definitely going to be causing you to, let's say, spend a little bit more than you would need to. But that's not a problem so much. But what is a problem is that he can cause you to have mishaps here. So take care. Your mind is becoming very distracted during this Guru transit in the 12th house of your chart, either moon or ascendant. There is a positive side. Do not fear. I'm going to get to that. But let's just lay it out like it is. Jupiter's going to tire you a little bit here. You're going to become restless. You will definitely want to travel foreign lands anywhere. You're in the mood for escapism, either from the moon or ascendant. And Jupiter aspects directly sixth house of your chart. Colleague, workplace situation is becoming tense. You don't trust anybody and there are difficult tensions in the workplace. It's not so nice as last year. Some tensions are definitely coming up. Stay clear of any confrontation in the workplace. It's so important that you do. 
Now, because Jupiter is your seventh lord, when he goes six houses away like this into your twelfth house from your seventh house, as it were, he's going to create tension relationship-wise. Maybe spouses having illness, partner, girlfriend, boyfriend's not so well, or there is some tension developing between you occasionally. Avoid those secrets between you and the spouse. Be open, communicate honestly, and this will mitigate dangerous factors of the transit. Now, some of you may even consider relocating because Jupiter aspects K2 fourth house. Some of you may have no choice. Even going into foreign land, doors open up for this possibility in some cases. Look into it if it does. That's fine. The other thing is Jupiter is your seventh lord, business lord. Business losses cut back are very lightly in this Jupiter transit. You know, Jupiter rules business deals for Gemini Moon and Ascendant, and he's gone six from his own house. So I've just spoken beginning of the video. Check it out that Jupiter Taurus favors local business, but not so much Gemini. Gemini is a bit conflicting because markets are fluctuating, not favoring you so much. So what can you do? Expand into different shores, foreign Foreign business may be good, definitely, and certainly internet business can be really good. Gemini Moon and Ascendant this year. Your office space is a mess. Let's face it, K2 fourth house, you need to sort it out, change it. Some of you relocate to a whole new office space as well. Students among you can't work in your present study space. It just is not going to work because Jupiter aspects K2 changes have to be made. You have no peace there, no settled feeling, and you need that to study. Pay attention to this during the year. As I say, tendency to escapism is really big this year. Don't get into compulsivity, addictions, etc. You know, Jupiter aspecting sixth house, ad addictive behavior habits becomes very strong if you should have tendencies here. Make it positive escapism. Jupiter is spiritual wisdom. He is in 12th house, the most spiritual house. So Gemini, Moon and Ascendant make the most of this spiritual wisdom of this time alone, studying, researching students as well, definitely. Research, definitely a good time for that. But it's a spiritual thing. It's about wisdom, meditation, intuition going within this year. Gemini's like to keep moving. They're such social people. It's difficult, but make the most of this absolutely wonderful opportunity. Jupiter aspects K2, the most spiritual combination, and it's happening 12th, 4th house. Those of you so inclined, and if you're listening to my video, many of you may be learning astrology, learning a cult, getting deep spiritual insights. It's so beneficial this year. It's important for your physical well-being as well. Jupiter six away from his own position, aspecting sixth house as well. You can have mishaps. You can have digestion problems, health problems, all coming up quickly, unexpectedly slowing you down. It's because it's a stressful situation, Jupiter 12th house here. So what should you do? As I say, don't let yourself get into work confrontations. Don't get into relationship confrontations. Get space to yourself because very soon, don't forget, after May 25, Jupiter's going into your sign and that's a whole new story. For Cancer Moon, Cancer Ascendant, wow, Jupiter's going into the 11th house of your chart. He loves to be here. He's going to bring you many benefits, expanding income, job promotion, job expansion, so many good things. But I have to tell you, this transit will be affected, especially from the moon, by Saturn's transit in the 8th house. 
You see, when Jupiter transits 11th house, there is an obstructing factor from 8th house planets. And this is something that we have to understand. In this case, it's very potent because Saturn is obstructing, not any other planet, just Shani. And Shani has been aspecting 10th house. So many Cancerians, Moon Ascendant, have had job challenge, challenge with the boss organization, loss of job also, some of you, a lot of workplace stress. But because Jupiter is favorable for Cancer Moon Ascendant, you will still get benefits. Job opportunities come. Extra income opportunities come. You're feeling optimistic, much happier, much more forward thinking than you have been some time perhaps recently. Now, recently, of course, Saturn in the 8th house business may have collapsed. Business marketplace may have just not been good. Business problems, partner problems within the business, all sorts of problems if you are self-employed. Jupiter helps you here, expands you slowly, cautiously, but gives you new opportunities. Because of Shani's blocking, income, gain, prosperity comes to you when you do something new. One of the best factors would be skilling up now. This is really, really beneficial. You see Guru aspects third house, skill set, training. K2 is there. Maybe some old skills, you're going to utilize them again. But new skill set, education, it's great. Students, it's a good thing for you now. Jupiter makes you much happier in your whole learning experience during the next 12 months that's for sure and what a year for meeting new people friendship wise even romantic opportunities jupiter aspects fifth house some of you network circles expand old friends come into your orbit again and siblings particularly have a big karmic connection to you this year so make the most of these wonderful opportunities for new company, expansive social life and a real feeling of optimism. Yes, you've got to be cautious. Yes, you need to do something different, not go back into past stressful situations. It's a helpful transit definitely for all Cancer, Moon and Ascendant. For Leo Moon and Leo Ascendant, you know that Jupiter is going into the 10th house of your chart. Is this good for your career? It certainly is. But I have to tell you, it will increase stress in your life to a great extent. Jupiter 10th house is not the easiest transit. You've got to handle this very carefully, but definitely grab the opportunities. They are once in a lifetime. Because first of all, Jupiter is not being blocked by any other house planet generally long term here and secondly Jupiter and Saturn the two big movers are in the angular houses for Leo this is a change around year this year affects destiny for quite some time to come so what's going to happen career wise here we need to analyze it carefully Guru is your fifth house lord and your eighth house lord fifth house he's a fortunate planet to you friend to the sun your lord but he's your eighth house lord. Now, from the moon, it's much more stressful than ascendant. That's the first thing we have to face. Now, check the beginning of the video. If you didn't hear my introductive analysis of the astrology, you need to. Guru is your fifth house lord. He brings you happiness. He brings you into a very expansive workplace situation. But because he's eighth house lord, things change suddenly. You're always having to adapt to sudden happenings in the workplace for the whole of this year. Nothing is steady. Nothing is even keel. That's for moon and ascendant both. Jupiter represents fans, people who support you, like you, help you. But he's gone six away from his own sign, Sagittarius. Once again, check the beginning of the video. At the beginning of this transit, it's easier. Once we get to the end of the year, October, November, December, it gets more and more knife edge stressful for you. You've got to watch your health this year. It's really crucial. You see, six away attracts enemies, competitors. It's a really competitive work atmosphere. People think Jupiter just smooths everything out, makes it easy. No, he's your eighth house lord. 
You've got to do things differently career wise. You've known this for some time, but now it's really going to happen. And what's really going to benefit you is education because Jupiter Aspects fourth house, general education house. Many Leo skill up in a whole new career during this next 12 months. And students change living situation, job situation if they are working. It really affects educational environment entirely. But one of the things is Jupiter 10th house makes all Leos, Moon and Ascendant, take on too much. We must remember that Guru aspects the sixth house of your health. So don't let health let you down last minute. It could happen. De-stress all the time. Your home life is really important this year. Moon and Ascendant. Some of you move home as well, which increases stress in your life definitely, but you feel the need to do so. Work and home are intricately linked this year. Students make big domestic changes as well. Business people, be cautious. Jupiter, 8th house, Lord, 10th house. You can expand beyond boundaries here and have losses even. Yes, Jupiter aspects, second house. You can get increased income. Some of you increase money making opportunities, but there is a danger because Guru is 8th house, Lord, if you go over the top here. So watch your health, watch competitors coming for you and expand in a cautious way. If you keep yourself to yourself and don't invite too much jealousy, envy, you'll be fine. Some Leos make profit from property deals, by the way, because Jupiter aspects second house. And as I say, moving home, changing home environment is a definite, definite factor here, which increases work opportunities. Some of you even work from home. And Jupiter, your fifth house, Lord, has gone to the 10th house. Some of you romantic opportunities come in the office. Once again, it's six houses away. It's a risky situation. By the way, risk taking is not advised work wise, business wise, because Guru has gone six away from the, the risk speculation house. You can lose. And he's aspecting K2 losses in your second house of finance. So if you keep it slow and steady, expand, get yourself educated, do things differently, but give enough attention to your home life. Don't become a workaholic Leo this year. It's going to affect your health because you're on the right path next year. 2025 May onwards. Wow. Guru goes into the 11th house, giving you great wealth and expansion. Do not fear. For Virgo, Moon and Ascendant, this is a great transit for you. Jupiter goes into the ninth house of your chart. He's entirely happy to be here by house. Yes, the beginning of the transit's easier, as I've spoken about just the beginning of this video, so do check that out. But on the whole, this transit is expanding your whole horizons in life. There are no obstructions to this transit, so it's particularly good for education students starting a new educational course. This is the one for you. Have no fear. Give your all to this educational experience. Business people expanding into foreign shores, distant horizon, foreign trade goes especially well this year because Jupiter is your seventh lord of business success. This is perfect. If you want to travel this, this year, particularly foreign shores, foreign land, it is excellent. Jupiter will protect you on your travels, that's for sure. You get good advice this year. So if you need legal advice, medical advice, any advice, you will get the right information. This is excellent. You get good relations with your father, mentors, teachers, all authority figures, definitely. You'll be seeing the big picture this year. There's no narrowness now. You're seeing the big picture. You're concerned about philosophy, religion, spiritual truths, understanding, and you will get great help with this. You will meet a teacher guru who perhaps really helps you. 
If you've been struggling with boss, superior, workplace, the whole situation smooths out. Even a very favorable superior comes to you who appreciates you. That's what's behind this Jupiter transit, actually, Virgo Moon Ascendant. You get appreciation for who you are. This is very special indeed. Those of you who want to have children, it couldn't be better. Jupiter, ninth house, aspecting fifth house, starting a family, especially auspicious because Jupiter is in Taurus. Again, check what I've already spoken about this at the beginning of this video. So this is expanding family, expanding your happiness with your children, clearing up misunderstandings as well. This is smoothing out so much stress in your life. This is a most welcome transit for you. If you're seeking a new relationship this year, couldn't be better. Guru Aspects Fifth House, new relationship opportunities abound. Get out there, mingle, don't hide away in your room. This is not the year for hiding away. People who really appreciate you come, as I say, and this is so important. Ongoing romance is so good. You may definitely marry this year, many of you. That's because, of course, Jupiter represents partner, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend in your chart. So this is very good for your ongoing relationship situation. This will really smooth out misunderstandings. Traveling together is especially auspicious. And very strangely, some Virgos may even take financial risk this year. Business risk situations appeal to you. This is not a bad thing. Take advice. It can be good if it is thought out. But having said that, you know, Jupiter is aspecting K2 first house. One of the best factors about Jupiter ninth house this next 12 months, Virgo, is that your gut feeling becomes definitely reliable. Virgos are very logical. Don't like to listen to intuition, gut feelings. You've got to make a list, right? Work it all out. Analyze everything. Don't do that so much. Listen to your deep intuition. It's becoming very strong during this Jupiter Taurus transit. For Libra Moon, Libra Ascendant, Jupiter's gone into a Venetian sign. You're a Venus ruled person. It's going to make you a little bit risk takey this year. You'll be willing to expand things, but I would advise you take good advice and don't get into risky financial situations because Jupiter is your third and your sixth lord and he's gone into the Dustana eighth house. Have caution with all of your financial dealings. That's the first thing I would say. You become a little bit secretive this year. That's the thing. And people don't quite know what's on your mind during this transit. You're thinking about future plans and particularly workplace situation. Jupiter in this eighth house will expand workplace stress in your life, but you won't be inclined to speak about it. That's the thing. So competition comes up work-wise as well. Workplace stress, competition, colleagues. It's not straightforward. Don't tell colleagues too much. Keep your thoughts to yourself. It will serve you well. Jupiter going into the next sign, you see. Jupiter into Gemini. Next transit from May 25. All of this workplace tension will go, I promise you. So don't compromise your autonomy this year. Keep your thoughts to yourself. In any case, you'll have enough on your plate because Jupiter rules third house. Siblings could be having crisis. Pets could be having problems. Family are having problems. You're the good Samaritan this year. That's another thing. So you're going to make some good karmas, actually. That's, that's good, isn't it? But as I say, the worst thing is financial matters. Expanding in financial spending could go over the top. Family concerns require your help, even financial assistance. And don't forget that Jupiter aspects fourth house of home. Some of you are making huge home changes now. Some of you even moving home. It's slightly different here from moon or ascendant. From the moon, it's more challenging. From ascendant, you can make good property deals, investment, etc. But there will be sudden hitches coming up, I have to tell you, because of Jupiter's third, sixth house lordship. Legal matters become entangling. Don't expect property deal move to be smooth, I'm afraid, this year, though it could be long-term profitable for you, that's for sure. 
If you are a student, you've got to find some space to yourself. You may have to make a whole domestic change to be able to study quietly, many of you, during the next 12 months. One thing that's very good this year, traveling, particularly distant shores, isolated places where there's no one around. Why? Because Guru aspects Ketu in your 12th house, going into ashram, retreat, somewhere quiet, peaceful, away from mobile phone connections even, if you can find such a place, that would be perfect. You're seeking a little bit of seclusion and it's favourable for you to go there. Most definitely join us Jupiter, 8th house transit. For a Scorpio moon, Scorpio ascendant, what an auspicious transit this is for you. Going to help you in many ways, particularly from the moon. It's especially favourable because Jupiter makes a very special yoga with the moon when he's in the seventh house. You're going to get many benefits, all of you, though. You're going to get improved health, improved friendship, network, circle, communications, restored, much more happiness, much more feeling of people are not pressurizing you anymore. Freedom of communication with other people. So many benefits. Business people benefit, employed people benefit, and new income expands for many of you. See, Guru going seventh house, it's like a stress relief moment. All of a sudden, you can just go, oh, yes, now I can talk to people. I can be myself. I don't have to be so secretive, so on guard. Of course, you will always be a little bit like that because you're Scorpio. But immediately, Guru changes sign. On the 1st of May 24, I promise you, you will feel this inner feeling of, Oh, something is shifting here, which is very, very favorable. Check the beginning of this video as well, where I've talked about the fact that the real benefits come in the first few months of this transit. Be ready. Don't waste time to exploit these very favorable opportunities. And it's really important to say straight away, Guru is aspecting to K2, your co-lord, who is in 11th house. Now, this K2 11th house hasn't been so easy for you last few, well, last year, actually, basically, because you've had to give up friendships. You've been less trusting in your network circles. You've even felt a tiny bit isolated, some of you perhaps, but now friends who you've not seen for years, people that you've not communicated with, siblings particularly, you could mend communication with them. If you are a business person, self-employed, this is superb. Jupiter from your seventh house, business house, aspects your Lord K2 in the house of profit. You've got to expand. You've got to change something. You've got to be a little bit less unnerved. Just go for it now, particularly first few months of the transit. Business opportunities, marketplace opportunities are opening up. Employed people benefit definitely as well because Guru is your second house lord. Money for you is coming from doing things differently. Perhaps a whole work situation becomes less stressed. But many of you change job, move job, just go away from it all now. You've got courage to make big changes and opportunities abound for new job, new income, many of you. It's a good year for relationships as well because Guru, don't forget, is your fifth house Lord Romance. He's, he's in the seventh house. Some of you marry this year. Some of you find excellent romantic opportunities, sometimes through travel occasionally, but generally it's auspicious for beginning romantic partnerships now. If you've been in a relationship having problems, they're going to dissipate greatly this year. Even some of you get divorced. How can that be happening? happening? Well, because you can do it with less stress now. So if the relationships got to that point, it will end in a much more harmonious way than it was doing perhaps last year. But either way, you feel better about the whole relationship scenario. That's the key. And in general, in your life, communications are favourable. Now, speak to people. Don't hold back. With your siblings, definitely deep talks need to happen. With your cousins, family, everything. Because where there was difficulty before, rifts can be definitely mended this year. 
Sagittarius, Moon and Ascendant. Jupiter is your Lord. It's very important wherever he is by transit. He's going into the sixth house of your chart. Does do Stana House. There's going to be some problems this year. There's going to be some contention, some quarrels. But there is a good side as well. Let me tell you about this. It's particularly difficult from Moon. Moon in Sagittarius, you've got to have a lot of caution. Ascendant as well, but more so the moon. What's going on? Well, all of a sudden, you're feeling tense in your work situation. Colleagues, things are changing. Tension in the workplace is the biggest factor. Niggling things keep on coming up. There's so much to do. You can become worn out, stressed by it. You must give yourself time alone. Jupiter aspects 12th house. You'll be feeling as this transit goes on, where can I go to escape? from this and that's the positive side. Foreign land travel, going into quiet contemplation, you need this. That's what you need to do. If you engage in workplace tensions, quarrels, you're going to become tied up in a very difficult situation. Keep yourself aloof from this workplace stress, I definitely advise. Watch your health as well because stresses are mounting up. There's so much work you have to do. Stuff around the house, stuff in the workplace, as I say. And you can be feeling tensions in your family circle because Jupiter aspects second house, family, all the way through the transit. You feel like changing job, expanding job, hold fire. Let me give you the good news. Let's look a bit forward because from May the 14th next year, your Lord's in the seventh house and that is so good for you. You will get the job then. You will change the job. You will get a whole new business opportunity. Stay a little bit reserved this year. If you try to push through these difficult barriers now, you'll come up against more stress and confrontation. Basically, you don't need that Sagittarius. Here's the thing. Competitors are coming out of the woodwork. People you thought were your friends are becoming competitors. This isn't so good for you positive side. Jupiter gives you good solutions. You can see the future. You see, Sagittarians have the big vision. Jupiter is your Lord. In this sixth house, rise above contention. Rise above quarrels. Think future orientation. Suss out in secret new opportunities. Jupiter aspects 12th house. Your dreams become prophetic. Watch your money, although, to be honest, there's nothing much you can do. Expenses are going to go through the roof. There's going to be difficulty with your credit cards and debit cards and everything because you have to spend. It's OK to do so. Let me tell you once again, expenses mounting this year, unexpected, difficult factors. But the good news next year, you will replenish all of it and more. Do not forget that. That's going to save you a lot of unnecessary worry, Sagittarius. What's your diet? Jupiter's sixth house indigestion's a big thing, probably because of stress level, basically. But also watch what you're eating. You could go to extreme. Some of you put on a lot of weight. Some of you lose a lot of weight. Moderation is the key. Check what I've already said about this Jupiter Taurus transit at the beginning of the video. It definitely applies to Sagittarius this year. Don't forget, you need to get yourself some time alone, relaxation, spiritual practices, getting away to quiet wilderness places. Wow, so much stress comes away as you focus on that 12th house. That's what your Lord Jupiter's looking for, a bit of peace and quiet to yourself. Go and get that. It's going to benefit you for the whole of this transit. For Capricorn Moon and Capricorn Ascendant, this is such a good transit for you. I cannot emphasize how favorable it is. Guru has gone into the fifth house of your chart. You're having some problems last year with your home life, moving, property deals. It's all going to sort out as Guru gets out of that fourth house now. He's going to help you both. Moon and Ascendant, you're going to be inspired to many new creative ventures in your life and your relationships improve tremendously. Let's start with the basic thing. Fifth house is about children. Capricorn, if you want to start a family, if you're going to have children, this is a very good year because Guru aspects 
ninth house as well. So having kids, starting a family, expanding a family, all good. And problems with your kids sort out in a miraculous way. They're doing extremely well during this year. So generally speaking, there's so much tension coming away from that family home atmosphere during this Jupiter Taurus transit. If you're seeking romantic opportunities, it's good too, particularly traveling and particularly in education settings, if that applies to you. Students, this is your year. You've been waiting for this moment. Start a new education course. It's the right one for you. Future benefits will be out of this world. So if you've been struggling, education gets easier. You can speak to your teachers, mentors, lecturers. Everybody's open to help you. Seek advice. Seek help. It's an excellent educational year for you. See, Jupiter is your 12th house lord. Sometimes he can make you spend a lot of money and sometimes he can make you save a lot of money. Capricorns save more than they spend generally anyway. So, I mean, depends on your chart. But Jupiter going into the fifth house, your risk level, your ability to take calculated risk goes right up. And this could be good. Sometimes you have to take a little bit of risk. But get advice. You get good financial advice this year and you're willing to do things financially that are a little more risky. At the beginning of the year, it's better. Check the beginning of my video because this transit works best at the beginning rather than at the end. Listen to that if you didn't before. Now, fifth house is creative venture, creative thinking. You're going to get good ideas this year. If you are artistic person, musician, artist, creator, writer, anything such as that, you're going to have inspiration. You're going to be inspired to new creative endeavors that will be long term profitable for you. So go ahead with that. Do the work. It's going to benefit you. In your relationships, it's, it's generally good. Siblings become important to you this year. Jupiter is your third lord as well. So generally speaking, family relationships are helped, as, as I say, generally. But here's the thing. You've got to be very independent of this. Third house is a quarrelsome house. Jupiter sometimes creates contention for you this year that will be contained. So generally, where you are helping other people, helping children, mentoring people, teaching people, you're going to be so appreciated this year. If you're seeking romantic opportunities, Jupiter can bring them to you. Sudden attractions come. He's your third house lord. You know, third house is about physical attraction. So people seeking that, it, it could happen, definitely. Education setting, foreign travel particularly. People are impressed by you in the workplace, definitely. Seeking a new job, it's very favourable. Third house, Lord, fifth house, you defeat all the competition. It's good for travel, foreign travel, foreign lands, you are protected. So all in all, it's an expansive year, starting new ventures, educational ventures, definitely speculative ventures, some of you, but definitely business is very, very good. New opportunities from foreign business as well. This is a really expansive year. Make the most of these opportunities. Do not delay. For Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon Signs as well, Jupiter Guru has gone into the fourth house of your chart this year. Now, this is very different from the Moon and Ascendant. From the Moon, it's quite challenging to have Guru here. From the Ascendant, it's a little bit easier. But there are lots of things in common, and I'm going to focus on those definitely. But just briefly, if you have Moon Aquarius, this is, is going to affect peace of mind. Your peace of mind is becoming a little bit disturbed. So take care during this year to have calming meditation because you're going to be thinking about 20,000 things at once because Jupiter is expanding all of that subconscious mind. You see, 12th house and 4th house influence subconscious factors. 
But Guru Jupiter is your second lord. It's about feeling secure. And your 11th lord, it's about game prosperity. There's something not working home life. You've been ignoring it. Now you're going to have to sort it out. Home space is unsatisfactory. And moon and ascendant, you're going to have to make big changes about home life in the next 12 months. You see, Shani continues first house Aquarius in his own multicone sign. So you're ready for this work, but perhaps you've been putting it to one side. Now you can no longer do so. Some of you sell property change, property extend, property. It's big time. It is not minor changes. But your secondary lord is Rahu and he's in your second house now. He's bringing a whole phase of experience to an end. He's about decluttering your life. So decluttering the home, getting rid of all the stuff you don't need. It's on the cards and this is the year you can no longer put it off. But you need to declutter the mind as well. Don't forget, fourth house is moon, manus mind. You've got to get rid of grudges, resentments, all of these negative things that are clogging up the mind. This will be really important psychological work many of you have to attend to. Now, this is a very good year for study students because Jupiter fourth house aspects eighth house research study. But you need to change home environment to make the best of this. It's not the best year for speculation stock market, though, because K2 gives losses here. But long term, do not fear. This is a bit of an insular year for Aquarius Ascendant Moon because there's so much domestic stuff you've got to see to. You don't like this very much. But here's the good news. Next year is going to shift completely. Rahu comes into your sign. And more than that, Jupiter goes into your fifth house. That's the time for some spectacular financial changes. Do not fear. And finally, when the stress at home gets too much, you should go to the 12th house. 12th house is travel, foreign land, meditation, retreat, get away from it all. This is very favorable. Travel, foreign lands, anywhere really is actually favored with this Jupiter fourth house. But don't do it to escape. Just do it to give yourself a little bit of a break because... Once you've sorted out those home problems, a whole new experience comes to you. As I say, Rahu's knocking on the door. He'll be in Aquarius very soon. For Pisces Moon, Pisces Ascendant, Jupiter is your lord. Where he goes is always important by transit. He's going into your third house now. This is a little bit of an iffy transit. Let's analyze it carefully. You see, this is the modern Akarakastana position of Jupiter. He doesn't like to be in this third house. He feels contained. Something is containing you, holding you back this year. But there's good news because any planet seventh is going to block this transit. When it's negative transit, it's excellent that K2 seventh house blocks this negative effect, freeing you up. This is good news. You see, Jupiter's given you expansion, particularly financial expansion last year. Now he's expanding mind, expanding communication, but he's negative here. He makes you fearful, feel, feel like people are getting to you, watching you, hassling you. You don't feel free. You feel a little bit contained. But because K2 is your secondary lord, seventh house, this negativity fades away. How does it fade away? Because you become indifferent to it all. You rise above strife in your life. You take the high road of forgiveness and so on. So this is excellent. K2 is definitely about higher principles in life, spiritual outlook. So it's a very good time for spiritual learning, spiritual pursuits, and definitely this is good for students. Students, you can get good results this year. Why is that happening? Because Jupiter aspects 7th house, 11th house, you get help in studies. 
You're leaving past behind here. Jupiter aspects K2, but funnily enough, because K2 is in seventh house old, relationships come back into your experience. People you haven't seen for ages, friends as well, because 11th house is impacted, are coming back. This is a very convivial social period for all Pisces moon and ascendant. However, don't forget Jupiter is your lord, but he's your 10th lord career and he's gone six away. There can be quarrels, contentions, competition, pressures in the workplace. What should you do? Keep your own counsel. Don't confide in people. Keep things undercover for a while. Things will be changing pretty soon next year when you get Jupiter 4th house aspecting 10th house. For now, don't get into office politics. It's never worth it. Keep your own counsel. Don't tell people worries, concerns, work-wise. They are not going to help you, especially when you have K2 7th house. It's a very interesting transit for your relationships. Normally, third house can be tricky meeting new people. Can you trust them? Can you open up to them when you have Jupiter transiting? But this time, K2 is obstructing the trouble. How interesting. K2 is past karma, past life, past partners. So some of you ex-partner comes back. Some of you ex-friends or old friends come back into your experience. On the other hand, because K2 is your secondary lord and he's in seventh house, and Jupiter aspects, you will actually get deeper understanding with your spouse. But it's up to you. You have to make the move. You have to communicate. Big things happening, siblings, definitely, because Guru's gone into third house. Younger siblings may be having issues. There's a little bit of contention happening. Be kind to them. Don't stir up contention yourself. You're just going to make it worse. If you're a media person, writer, presenter, anybody doing any blogs, journalism, something such as this, you're going to get enormous profit this year because Guru Aspects 11th house. So put yourself out there, certainly. Don't hide away this year. It's definitely a time to publicize your ideas, your creativity. This can be enormously favorable and financially as well. And don't forget third house is the competition house where you compete with other people directly. Normally Jupiter third house you don't want to compete, you're shying away from that. But this year K2 obstructs a transit. Strange thing, I've just been speaking about it so funnily enough you are not going to shy away from competition and you can get good job opportunities, interviews, many of you, particularly at the beginning of this Jupiter-Taurus transit. Check out the other important transits happening right now. They're on the playlist on your screen. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.